How's it going, you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs. Now I'm out at my electrical panel getting ready to install an energy monitoring system by Emporia. So if you want to know how much energy you're consuming, the first place to start is just your utility bill. You're gonna have a bar chart usually on your monthly consumption. And if you have a smart meter, most likely through their online porter, you can go down to the daily granularity level. So you can see every single day of the month, how much energy are you consuming? But I wanna do much more. So the centralized module here, you can plug in 16 individual circuits and you'll also through the top be able to place Hall effect sensors on your two phases coming in. So you'll get your total energy consumption in near real time and that will log over time, but you also can go down to 16 individual circuits so it gives you a ton of great information while you start to understand your energy consumption at your house. Now I'm going to jump right into the installation and then throughout the video I'll give you a few more resources that I'm using to kind of track this power and then also like spreadsheets on putting that all together just in case you're not doing an on-grid setup where you're tied to the grid but maybe you're doing a solar power setup for off-grid you're trying to understand all the different things that will consume energy so you make sure that you size your panels your inverter, and then your battery storage correctly. But for now, let's go ahead and jump in and install the energy monitor in our electrical panel. So just a note, we're going to be in the electrical panel here. So if you do not feel safe, don't jump into this. You're always going to have the phases coming in. Those are going to be live. Your main disconnect here it's a 200 amp disconnect we'll shut off power to our bus bars that go up through and then feed all of our 120 and 240 circuits but that copper right there is still live from the meter base so we're going to be putting some hall effect sensors down here and then placing hall effect sensors into the individual circuits that i want to monitor but while you're doing this work obviously you're going to go ahead and hit your main disconnect so you might need some additional lighting just so you can do the work safely so now we got our main disconnect off and i'm going to call out again remember your main phases coming from your meter base are still hot on the other side of that main disconnect now I'm going to be placing the module down in the lower right hand corner. Should be noted the antenna actually comes with an extension harness that I cut off and I just use the antenna itself because this is a flush mounted panel. I'm not able to run the antenna to the outside like you would if this box was, was wall mounted. So that's just one modification that I made. And then we'll go ahead and place our two main Hall effect sensors here across our two phases neutral in the middle and then our two phases to the outside. Now there is orientation to these so make sure you're installing them correctly. This gives you the arrow to the breaker so that's how you're going to want to install them. And then I'm going to go ahead and install the power wire harness. Now I want to keep this as tucked in as I can back here, but obviously we're going to have wires coming into both sides. So it is going to get pretty busy. One thing I will do is I'm going to modify this harness. I do not need all this extra wire. So I'm going to modify the harness. Since I'm only installing one of these, I am going to need to take this black hot, pigtail that into, they call it a 15 amp breaker. I'm going to come into a lightly loaded 20 amp breaker that's low in my panel here. And then I'm just gonna use a WAGO, bring all these guys in together, and then we'll go ahead and go into the neutral bar with all three of these as called out in the instructions. And then for your main sensors up top, all you have to do is plug those guys in on the top side. I'm gonna go ahead and keep the wire together as much as possible. And then they also give you little plugs if you want to use them for any of the empty audio jacks that you're not using. So for this setup, I'm going to be running together the red, blue, and white. So I'm cutting those quite a bit shorter. I'm stripping those wires down. And I'm gonna bring them together in a five wire Wago 221 lever nut and take one neutral wire pigtail and bring that up to the neutral bus bar. And you'll see right below this video, link in the description over to our Amazon store, in the electrical section, you'll see the perfect starter kit for these Wago 221 lever nuts. 
They are perfect for DIYers and projects like this. We'll use the three wire, five wire, and you'll see that inline splice, the 2401 also used in my electrical box. But for a little over $40, it's a perfect way to get started and you'll like those way more than the wire nuts. So go ahead and strip down that pigtail. I'm gonna run it behind, use my wire strippers and then tighten that down on the bus bar, tucking it out of the way. Now we need to give it power, right? So we need to bring our hot pigtail into the power harness and that's what's actually gonna power the overall central module. I'm gonna bring that up to a 20 amp circuit and again, pigtail that in using 12 gauge wire. So now at this step, you're ready to actually check the connectivity to your module. You'll go through setup, you'll connect it to your Wi-Fi network, it's gonna to connect to Bluetooth to your phone, and then also it's gonna look for firmware updates. But once you go through all those steps, you can actually get connected and start to monitor your main sensors and the overall power and energy consumption of your system. Also a good thing about connecting right now is you might find any mistakes like I had where I actually needed to run that red wire that I brought in with the blue and white wire. I needed to extend that up and bring it to a second circuit breaker. So I went ahead and did that, pigtailing it very similar to the black wire going to the unit. And now I'm up and running and I read both of the phases opposed to just one phase, which is what I originally had it set up for. So even at this point, you can bring up your app, you can look at your total home energy consumption, but although this is very handy and very valuable information, this is not actually where the Emporia shines. The Emporia unit shines when you can start to break out all your individual circuits. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna connect up all my 240 volt circuits, show you how to do that, and then also some of my critical 120s, and we'll start to break out energy consumption across circuits, and then kind of that bucket where we're not accounting for it, and you wanna minimize that bucket to get a really good understanding of your energy consumption and which appliances are taking the most in terms of energy consumption. Now you're not gonna be able to wire in every circuit. You only have 16 to work with. 240 circuits are, at least in my mind, the most important because those are gonna be the large energy consumers. So I'll wire all those up and I'm only putting one clamp on each of those. We'll show you why you can do that later on. Do pay attention. Remember the clamps have to be in a certain direction to read out the current, which then translates into power correctly. Wire management is definitely going to be an issue. So where you can, it does make sense to kind of bundle up the excess wires and get them out of the way in a spot in your electrical panel that actually has a little space. You can do like I did here on the left-hand side and kind of use some of those neutral wires for a little bit of wire management. And then you'll just go ahead and take your time. Remember, we always want to be careful around those main phases coming in from our meter because those are still live even though our main disconnect is off. Now I'll finish everything up here and then we'll see what we get on the actual monitor reading out individual circuits. So I have everything buttoned up and I have five additional circuits that now I can start to monitor things, compare the overall energy consumption from the two main clamps at the bottom compared to the individuals and you'll get a balance. If that balance starts to drift up to 12%, 15%, 20% of your overall energy consumption, well, you probably should go back and identify those circuits that are taking all that energy and put an individual sensor on those so you can really break everything down and see where your energy consumption is going in your home. So I did crank up a bunch of other appliances and then I could see now individually which appliances are taking most of the energy consumption. You can look at that in graph form and see that step up over time. And then you can change your time axes as you continue to log over hours, days, and then even into months and possibly years. But then you can jump back and very quickly you start to understand for each of your appliances, which one's the really the energy hog and does most of the consumption. And that can help you drive your behavior, plan out future appliances, or if you're doing a solar project like I'll be doing coming up, to make sure that you really size your system to offset your energy needs. So my initial impressions of the Emporia View Generation 2 is great. I mean, for under $200, it gives you a ton of awesome information, but I don't really have experience in the longevity, durability, how long is this thing gonna last? Is it gonna come disconnected from my Wi-Fi, or is it a really stable, smart home product that I can depend on? If you wanna get that take, I will account for that over in our blog, and you'll see that link 
below the video in the description as well. Now, if you want to start to dive into understanding appliance energy consumption, and this is a little bit intimidating to you, don't worry, you can start with something like this. This is a 12 to $15 energy watt meter from Amazon. And check out this video right here. I'll show you an application where I used it in my house to understand the energy consumption of my coffee maker. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.